Hey what's going on YouTube, today I'm going to be demonstrating and reviewing gameplay on the Oculus Rift development kit early build and I'm going to be talking about how virtual reality VR head tracking tech integrates into gameplay and its potential problems. But because this is still an early build of the Oculus, I'm not going to be reviewing performance aspects such as resolution, latency, 3D and tracking accuracy. It wouldn't be fair to review these specifications because number one, it's not a final consumer product or it's a development kit and all of these aspects are bound to improve before the final consumer release. I'm only going to be reviewing the gameplay and how it incorporates head tracking technology. There's only a few games out right now that have full VR support, and the games that I've tried that have Octa support are Half-Life 2 and Strike Suit Zero. They are very different games with different approaches to VR implementation. Half-Life 2 is a first person shooter where you have full control of your body position and head position determines body rotation. Strike Suit Zero, on the other hand, is a space combat game where your body is in a fixed position relative to your spaceship and you're only able to look around the cockpit. The immediate benefit to using the Oculus Rift is additional immersion. The additional mechanism of experiencing the world just by moving your head in the direction that you want to look is extremely intuitive and it draws you closer to the action in-game more than anything I've ever tried in gaming. Putting on the headset takes you out of the real world and into the game. It blocks out external stimuli from the real world environment and the head tracking is so intuitive that it makes you feel like you're not looking at the game through the screen but you're actually in the game. I played the game standing up using a controller so that I was free to rotate 360 degrees. Controlling your vision and the conventional game camera was easy and controlling your character is the same as, always, as it always has been. But controlling your weapon was a lot more difficult. If you quickly look to the side, your weapon could end up off screen and you lose your point of aim. In real life, you would know where your weapon was pointing due to an ability called proprioception. This is how you determine body positioning due to magnitude of stretch in your muscles and the angle of limb bending. I'm going to demonstrate how proprioception works in the real world by using this MP5 submachine gun, Airsoft unfortunately, but I always know where my gun is pointing even if I'm looking in a different direction because I have proprioception, the ability of my muscles to know how much they're stretching and the angle of my limb positioning. Alright guys, I'm going to cut the live commentary. This is how proprioception helps you in aiming in the real world. Even though I'm looking off to the side, I know my gun is positioned this way, but in game, if you're only using a mouse or a joystick, you aren't necessarily going to feel your gun exactly in the same position and aren't going to be able to snap it back really quickly, even though like I can't physically see my limbs. I know exactly how to put my, uh, my, uh, my gun directly in front of my face due to proprioception and vice versa. I know how to look down at my gun, even though like, no, I can't see anything, I don't have any visual feedback, but proprioception gives me the proper feedback mechanism so that I can look relative to wherever my gun is pointing and I can move my gun wherever I'm looking. If you're not using a gun peripheral that's capable of VR tracking and you're just using a mouse or a joystick, then you lose proprioception relative to your vision and it's really hard to replicate that with an in-game mechanic. If you look away so that your weapon's point of aim is somewhere off screen, it could be difficult to recenter your field of view relative to your weapon and recenter your weapon relative to your field of view. I would imagine it would get easier with practice, but it's still difficult to do without a trackable physical gun in hand. An annoying mechanic that I've encountered in first person shooters is that I've talked about previously that when you look off screen, the gun doesn't follow you. But when you drag your reticle across the edges of the screen, it drags your vision with it. This makes the game playable for those sitting down, but it induces motion sickness. Motion sickness occurs when there's an inconsistency between what the eye see and the actual perceived motion. For example, motion sickness when flying occurs when you're a passenger in a plane and your eyes are on a fixed point, but planes pitch, roll, and yaw, your eyes say that you're sitting still, but your body orientation is moving with the plane. The exact opposite situation causes motion sickness while playing FPS and VR. Dragging your reticle across the screen makes your in-game perspective move with your gun, and it makes your visual system perceive movement, but your head is actually not moving with the gun. It's the same type of discrepancy as regular motion sickness, but backwards. You get less motion sickness while playing a space combat game like Strike Suit Zero because the game maintains a fixed body position and you're looking around the cockpit as you maneuver the ship. 
maneuvering your ship changes your visual perspective in a more realistic way than dragging your gun shifts perspective. All throughout development for the Oculus Rift, developers have wanted to reduce motion sickness. Lowering latency would definitely contribute to a solution, higher resolutions and higher field of view would also contribute to a solution, but I believe the most effective way to reduce motion sickness is to completely unlink view control and weapon control. Make it so that dragging your weapon across the screen doesn't move your view because dragging your reticle to reposition your view is not natural in the real world. Now this would effectively eliminate sitting down and playing with the mouse and keyboard and the only way to turn 360 degrees is to actually turn 360 degrees in the physical world but isn't that what VR is about anyways? having as much immersion as possible. Unless you play first person shooters using a physical world 360 degree rotation, I believe it'll be very difficult to play them. And the games that will benefit most from the Oculus Rift are games where you're in a fixed position. Space combat games like Strike Suit Zero come to mind. I know that Star Citizen will have Oculus support. Even mech games like Hawken could definitely benefit from Oculus support because you're um, relative your position relative to wherever your mech is facing and you're looking around your cockpit just like you're in a spaceship. Exploration games like Slender would have a massive improvement because horror games depend on immersion but you're susceptible to the same problems as first person shooters where you can get motion sickness if dragging your reticle like for Slender, it would be your flashlight. If you drag your flashlight across the edge of the screen, that shifts your field of view. I don't think you should be able to do that. I think um, your weapon or your flashlight should be permanently unlinked from your field of view. Overall, it's up to the developers to use Oculus technology in a way that naturally integrates into gameplay instead of in a way where the player is fighting the VR. One side complaint that I have right now is that stereoscopic 3D is not as impressive as NVIDIA 3D Vision with a 144Hz monitor, but it should improve like other specifications like resolution. It's important to remember with not just the Oculus Rift, but with any new technology to have realistic expectations. The Oculus Rift won't change gaming overnight. It's up to developers to implement VR into gameplay in a way that doesn't cause motion sickness, and sometimes you really just want to lay back in your chair or lay back on the couch and have a relaxed experience, minimal physical effort type gaming. I guess that's why, you know, Wii and Kinect gaming weren't as big as hits, even though, like, it was, I don't know, you could argue that gameplay using motion control was innovative, but, you know, a lot of times you just want to sit back on the couch and relax. You don't want to expend all of that physical effort. Enough consumers have to have the Oculus product to encourage developers to support the Oculus and you would have to have a strong PC to run the requirements of Oculus's final resolution whether it's 1080p in both eyes or 4K. Now if you want to get the early build of the development kit that I have, you should get it with programming for the Oculus in mind or to look at the Oculus critically in a review fashion. If developers are steadfast in their implementation of Oculus Rift support, VR gaming will be a mainstay and one of the primary ways we experience games instead of being just another gimmick. Thank you very much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed my review of the Oculus Rift early build. My name is David and I will see you next video.